Hey, this week I was watching um, an interview with Fortet, who's one of the most well-known electronic musicians in the world today, and for good reason, because in my opinion he makes music that's just amazingly organic sounding, um, he's got really got his own vibe, um, I love it. Um, so I was watching this interview, um, which was with uh, Future Music magazine, I think, and he was going through uh, some of the tracks from his latest album. Uh, which I think is called There Is Loving You. And he was talking about a particular track called Sing. Um, and I don't know if any of you have heard Sing. I'll play you the first, like, five seconds of the record. And I've always been interested in that sound, that um, kind of chord sound he uses, uh, which is kind of got a really um, blocky, kind of um, precise, sharp-edged feel to it. And I was wondering how he did that, um, and he actually shows you how he did it in the in this uh, future music interview. And basically, what he did was he took um, like an instrumental backing track from, I think it was like a 1980s science television program. Um, just you know the sort of thing, just a few synths basically um, playing a kind of relatively simple backing melody track. And he basically took that and chopped it up um, into small pieces and arrange the pieces and it gives this kind of um, really lovely um, effect where you get um, kind of quite a complex sound but it's really sounds um, precise and I was kind of interested to try it myself but unfortunately I don't have a big library of old DVDs and like cool places to sample from you know I haven't really <clears throat> I've heard four tests so, you know just spends a long time digging around for samples and stuff I don't really have that time on <laughs> on my hands so I was wondering well why don't I just try and make myself a cheesy 80s background uh, loop and then um, sample myself kind of thing and chop it up so that's exactly what I did and I just wanted to show you um, how it was actually surprisingly easy and I kind of I kind of quite like the results um, I'll play you the results I came out with um, I'm relatively happy with it. I think I could do it better now if I did it a second time, but it sounds a bit like this. So, you get the idea. It's a bit more complex sounding than Fortet's version, and I think his version is much better for it. Um, but on the other hand, it's good that it doesn't sound exactly like him. Copying people exactly is never a good thing. Um, this is what it sounds like kind of in the context of a track with a beat. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. It, the, loop kind of came out slightly cheesy which I'm not sure I like but again I think I could do it better if I tried again so I'll show you the steps I went through to make this kind of that kind of sound um, first up I had to make my cheesy synth loop and I basically did it using three tracks um, two of them are using an external analog synth I have but you could use the ES2 or anything really it doesn't really matter and in fact I think that maybe using digital synths for this would give the whole thing a crisper feel, um, a bit like the, that Ford Tet track. So basically, I tried to come up with um, three parts which made quite, um, which wove in and out of each other, kind of thing, and where there were different notes being played over each other at different times. So we, I basically that gives me a wide range of um, of like tones and harmonics, uh, like harmonies rather between the notes to choose from and it gives you basically a variety of different sounds. So first I came up with this kind of bass line. Which I quite like. I might even use that in the main, uh, the main part instead of the other bass line I've got. Uh, next I did a kind of higher, kind of arpeggiated line.
And if you play them together, you'll notice, and you can see it as well, that the timing of them, they're kind of set to different timings or they've got different rhythms. And that's important, I think, because it gives you, you get some notes, If once we get to the point where we're chopping this up, where you'll get a kind of, where they don't line up exactly. And and that kind of adds interest when, and it makes it more fun when you're chopping this stuff up. Instead of just getting a bunch of single notes, you'll get notes that kind of are, in different timings with each other. So So I found these kind of, this kind of arpeggiated type idea seemed to work pretty well for me. And finally I added one more um, layer which is <clears throat> some simple three note chords, some triads which are being played on uh, a native instrument's FM8. And it's a patch I made myself, a really simple patch. Um, but the one useful thing I'm, well, the one uh, clever thing I'm doing here is rather than just play the chords here, I'm using the FM8 arpeggiator, which is really, really good. Um, it's one of my favorite things about the FM8 um, to make these chord rhythms a bit more interesting. Again, for the same reasons as I said above, so we get more interesting uh, rhythmic movement going on. Um, so I'm actually using one of the presets but for some reason it's not coming up which one I used but anyway have a look through these presets that come with it and tweak them if you need to. So all together they sound like this. <laughs> You know, you get the idea, it's kind of a bit cheesy, um, quite fun and quite simple really. Um, so the next step was to bounce these down together because we want to be chopping them all up as one and that will give the kind of <clears throat> complexity of sound that you hear in that four tet um, style loop. Um, so what I would have done is, um, I think I just soloed all those tracks and I think they've got a bit of reverb applied. So. I probably did a bounce basically just with these tracks soloed and that way you get all the reverb applied to the tracks as they're, as they're bounced. Bounced it out to an audio file which I dragged back into Logic and <clears throat> sounds just as you'd expect. I think I may have applied one or two effects to make it sound a bit older. There's an isotope vinyl uh, plugin which I'm using here, it's free so if you want to use that I'm kind of regret using that a bit now actually kind of dulled the sound a bit and made it a bit less sharp but so the next step now we've got our cheesy 80s science program loop is to copy that and I'm gonna leave this here so in case I need to come back to it and redo it and what I'll do is I will convert to a new audio file. Um, the reason for that is that <clears throat> if I start doing things like reversing sections or um, uh, slowing them down or pitching them up or that sort of thing, uh, where I'll be working in the sample editor, if I was to just copy the region and start working in the sample editor, now the, any changes I made in the sample editor to this file would also change the original. These two regions are just references to the same audio file on your hard drive. So it's important to make a new audio file uh, when you're going to start messing around with things so that you've got the old one archived and you can always go back to it. Um, so I've got this copied file and I think what I did was use the scissor tool and holding down alt you notice that the scissor tool gets a little plus button and what that means is it will chop any region into equal sections of the size that you specify. So now I've got 16th notes basically of this um, synth part. And basically what I did was I started muting parts, um, moving parts around, you know, swapping them over. Um, this is getting my, my nerves. Um, and basically just experimenting with this, you know, and I spent maybe an hour or two just literally trying out different combinations of them. Sometimes I split them in two and because um, that I found that gave me a kind of nice glitchy sort of 30 second note. 
you know, you get a kind of glib type thing, which is quite, I thought was quite, quite cool. Um, so yeah, it was basically came down to mixing and matching these for a while. And ultimately I came up with this riff, which since I had so many audio files, I selected them all, right clicked, oops, and did a pack folder. So folder, pack folder, and that just puts them all into this handy folder where if you double click you get the original audio. So that's what my original uh, riff sounded like. As I say, I think it may be a bit too complex. It kind of, is, well, anyway. I uh, applied really short fades to the starts and ends of these to try, because I wanted them to sound sharp and precise and clinical, but at the same time I didn't want lots of pops and clicks, which you'd get if there were no fades. So for most of these audio files I've given it a fade of like two or three, um, and you still get a few little pops, but I think that's a kind of trade-off you get for having a really sharp sort of sound. Um, the next step was, well, I mean, once I'd done that, I decided that I wanted some kind of higher parts around the stereo field to kind of make it a bit more interesting, basically. So that's the... That's those parts. So to make those, what I did was the same process, really. I copied the track or the original um, loop, converted it to a new audio file, and this time what I did was I went into the sample editor by double clicking, went to factory time and pitch machine, and I chose the classic mode. Basically in free mode um, you can change pitch and time independently of one another. In classic mode if you pitch something up you also speed it up if you pitch it down you slow it down so I pitched it up one octave which is 12 semitones which is 1200 cents and as you can see as soon as I do that it instantly goes to 100% because by doubling by putting it up an octave you're going to double the speed so process and paste and now we've got the same loop at twice the speed and high higher octave <laughs> and I once again I just basically went through and chopped out really small little pieces of this um, which seemed to work well to me little glitchy parts which come together like this so that's basically how I went about sampling myself in to make a kind of fortet style um, loop. I hope that's been useful for some of you. Um, <clears throat> the way you start, the you know, the source material you start with, which you have complete control over how it sounds, will make a massive impact on how this ends up sounding. You know, the chords you use, the notes you use, the sounds, the synth sounds you use. <clears throat> So you can actually get a really wide variety of different sounds from this and you know, I think it's quite interesting that when I tried to do it, it didn't, I don't think it really sounds like anything Fortet would do. Um, it's, I mean it's a similar technique and you can tell it's in the same family of sounds but it's quite different to something he would make. So that's a good sign I think, it's, it shows that it's a technique you can use to make a lot of different um, styles of sound. Um, and it's just another useful technique in your arsenal. And I think it gives a kind of cool, quite complex sounding effect, uh, which would be quite difficult to achieve using just, like, it's almost like second generation uh, synths because you're bouncing it down into. Um, so I hope that's been useful. You could even try it out on guitars, you know, on using some real instruments, make a little loop using real instruments and then chop that up. Um, experiment basically and uh, enjoy. I hope to see you next time. Cheers.